Step one, design the Kanban filter. Before we write a single line of code, we need to understand what we are trying to do and what we are trying to implement. And to do that, we need to define the problem and the solution. The goal in this case is to estimate the location x and speed v of a particle or an object that in this case is moving in one dimension, but it could also be moving in two or three dimensions that will be very easy to extend afterwards. But for now, we'll start with one dimension. Now we want to estimate the location and speed of this object given some measurements. And the measurements we have are z equals the location, but we don't have access to the exact location. Even with the exact location, we don't need a common filter. We have actually a noisy measurement. And let me correct this because this ER, epsilon R, is distributed normally with mean zero and variance, sigma R squared. And what is interesting about this is that if we can solve it with only measuring the, the location X here, that is noisy, we can get an estimate not only of the location, but also of the speed of the object. And the Kama filter will give us estimates of the location and the speed, plus uncertainty estimates that could be very useful later if you want to ask yourself, how certain am I that the speed of this object is such? All right, before we get into how to solve this, we need to define a few things that are going to be useful to implement the Kama filter equations. First is the state vector x that I'm going to already subscript with k, meaning step k, because it's varying through time. So this is going to be at step k. It's a vector and it's our state vector. So this will contain the location k and the speed at time step k. And we also will have our measurement that is basically a scalar, so we just write it like that. And it's useful to use vectors and matrices in this notation because that's how the Kama filter equations were expressed or are expressed in order to generalize to any problem. The second thing we need to define is how our system is evolving through time. I'll just put here one. Step k plus one equals the location at step k plus the speed at step k multiplied by delta t. We're integrating the speed. Plus, and here I'm gonna do some magic, I'm gonna add an acceleration term. And I'll explain you why in the next line. All right, so that's for the position x. Now for the speed v, we can write something similar. Let me fix that. Now, why did I put this term a? If I don't write the term a, then the speed would be fixed to a constant and we wouldn't allow our object to change speed. So that would be equivalent to doing this and removing it from the line above too. And the thing is in reality, if we're tracking an object, we would like to also be able to track varying speeds or to assume that it can vary speeds up to a certain degree, but that it can change speed. Otherwise, um, our model would be very limiting. So let's go back to that. Now, the final step here to express the time evolution equations is to write them in vector form. And for that, we're gonna go back to this xk in vector form, which we say that is basically here for you to remember. 
and we're going to write it in the following form. A matrix that is square multiplied by x, okay, by the previous state, plus a vector multiplied by a. And in this case, this matrix is 1, delta t, 0, 1, and this matrix is a half of delta t squared and delta t. And we're going to call this matrix F and this matrix G to be consistent with the notation that you find, for example, in Wikipedia. You probably will see that in Wikipedia, this is the notation. XK equals F, uh, sorry, this is, <laughs> I forgot, plus one, FXK plus G, I think they call this UK. It has nothing to do with Brexit, by the way. Okay, it's probably very clear what XK means, but maybe the question is, what does this A has to do there, and how do we deal with it? This A, we're going to assume that it is also normally distributed with mean zero and some variance. And what this means is that the speed, you have it here, the speed can change given some acceleration that is noise to us. It's not something that we can really measure easily, but it is a random variable that we can only say some things like it's zero mean and it has certain variance that we will have to set. Now, this is in terms of time evolution. So, so far, fine, you can propagate your system through time, but now the question is how do we incorporate measurement information? And for that, we need to define the second part, which is that ZK equals, we said, XK plus Epsilon R. And in vector form, we're going to write it in this way. ZK equals 1, 0. XK plus, and here we have our noise. And this matrix 1, 0 is called H, as far as I recall. So now that we have our matrix F, G, H, and we have defined A and the other um, noises in our and uh, perturbations in our Kama filter, we are ready to plug this into the Kama filter framework, let's say, or equations, and solve both the prediction step that basically it means to pop propagate the state xk to xk plus 1. And if you look in Wikipedia, if xk is a random variable of... Okay, this is going to get complicated here of this covariance matrix and mean, then the mean in time step k plus 1 equals f the mean time step k and the covariance matrix at time k plus 1 equals f p k f transposed plus g a g transposed here i forgot to to be more to be clear this here is not a this is sigma a squared fine so these are the Kalman 
predict equations that we need to implement. Now, so far, so good, but we are not incorporating any measurements. So now we need to define the measurement step to incorporate the knowledge of a measurement, in this case ZK, into our estimate of the state vector. What you need to do here is to compute first the innovation, that is Y, that equals Z, this is a vector actually, ZK minus H and here we have the mean then you compute also the innovation covariance which is H P K H transposed plus R where in this case R is as defined above, then you need to compute the common gain, that is P H transposed and the innovation covariance matrix transposed. And now finally you can update and say that your new mean incorporating the measurement, so I will put here x given uh, z, the previous mean plus the common gain multiplied by the innovation. And the covariance matrix given the measurement is going to be the identity matrix minus the common filter multiplied by h multiply by P. Okay. And these two equations are the ones that are now updating your mean and your covariance matrix of your estimate, taking into account the measurement. And these here are the update equations. If you don't understand what's happening here, go to the literature. Um, it takes some time to, to figure out, but in the end it's pretty cool because you can see that if you know F, G, A, H, uh, and your measurement and your initial state, then with these equations you can propagate your state and you can incorporate measurements and you can have uh, a probabilistic estimate of your state. So just to recap this part, we started talking about what we want to estimate, how we can express the, the time evolution, how we can express the measurements, and then we went into expressing in matrix form so that then we can apply the common equations. And now we know exactly what we need to implement in our code, which are the common predict equations and the update, the common update equations. Okay, on to the next step.